One of the things we love to do with our adventure vehicles is add accessories like lights and refrigerators, but sometimes wiring things up can be a little intimidating and somewhat cumbersome, but there are some solutions out there that make things very easy. And in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison with the S-Pod and the Switch Pro, talk about some of the pros and cons, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give one to my son, Devin, the other one to my son, Jordan, and let them install these in their vehicles. And we'll see just how easy or difficult it is. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today we are looking at two different systems that makes wiring up accessories on your vehicle a lot simpler. And so what we have here is the S-Pod, and this is a vehicle specific for the Jeep Wrangler JK. My son's gonna install this on his Jeep. And this is the Switch Pros SP9100 universal system. So this one can be used in all kinds of applications. And my son Jordan's gonna install this on his Toyota Tacoma. So while this is not exactly an apples to apples comparison, if you're trying to decide on a system like this for your vehicle, I think this is gonna be very helpful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open these up. We're gonna talk about some of the specs, some of the pros and cons and similarities and differences. And then I'm gonna hand these off to my sons and let them install them and we'll see, we'll see how easy or difficult it is. So let's go ahead and unbox these and then we'll take a closer look at them. First, a quick look at the packaging. The S-Pod Source LT has a nice box with lots of graphics on it. It's probably really great for marketing. I actually prefer the basic box of the Switch Pro 9100. While both are packaged well, I have to imagine that the fancy graphics adds to the S-Pod's price, which we'll discuss here shortly. So since I'm just gonna be throwing these in the recycle bin in about the next five minutes, I'm fine with just the simple box the Switch Pro comes in. One other thing to mention before we start pulling stuff out of the boxes is that these are both made in the USA. First up, we're gonna take a look at the S-Pod Source LT system. And I chose this system because it is vehicle specific for the Jeep Wrangler JK and should be an easy plug and play for my son. Now this system has six circuits, meaning we can attach six different accessories and operate them independently and they are on 30 amp circuits. The rocker switch panel is specifically designed to mount in a certain location in the Jeep Wrangler, and it has dual LED light switches, which makes it easy to see in the evening. The controller cable is 10 feet long, and it should be simple plug and play. And everything is powder coated, so this should be very durable over the long term. There is some good weatherproofing, and all the wires are wrapped in high temp abrasive resistant nylon. This system has a low voltage cutoff to protect your battery. It's a self-healing fault protection circuit, and it also protects against overheating, shorts, reverse polarity, and field collapse. Lastly, in the package, there are some zip ties, wire heat shrinks, and connectors included, some excellent color instructions, and plenty of stickers to label up your switches with. Next up is the Switch Pro's SP9100 system, and this power system has eight switches and is a universal kit, so it's not vehicle specific. This one has eight circuits, four of which are 35 amp and the other four are 18 amps. The touch control panel is very compact and allows you a lot of versatility in where you can mount these. The buttons are backlit and you can customize the colors, whereas the S-Pod rocker panel only allowed a single color. There are several color-coded wires that are used to attach your accessories depending on the circuit you want to run them on. It's a little more involved than the S-Pod, but it still works well. The communication cable between the switch panel and the power module is 11 feet long, so you've got a lot of options here with this link. There is a lot of programming functionality built into this system, like powering up multiple outlets with one single touch, the ability to dim, flash, and strobe patterns, momentary on or off, plus there is a low voltage disconnect, previous memory settings, and a sleep mode. The Switch Pro module is rated as waterproof. They also include a bag of several wire connectors and zip ties. There is a multi-page instruction booklet and a whole lot of labels to choose from for your control panel. Here are some side-by-sides of the two systems, the power modules and the control panels. Some notable size differences here. 
The S-Pod system for the JK sells for $590, while the Switch Pro retails for $695. But these two systems, as I mentioned, are not identical. If you were to look at the S-Pod with an A switch panel that is similar to this Switch Pro, it sells for $930. So just keep that in mind as we're going forward and installing everything. I'll leave links down below for both of these systems if you want more details. So those are just some of the general specs on these two systems. But I'll say I've been using S-Pod for years and I have a very similar system. It's a lot older in my Jeep Wrangler JK and it worked really well. I have the toggle switches and I have a different system that's a little older with a bunch of fuses. This one is a lot nicer and it's got some modern amenities that I think my son is really gonna enjoy. And the nice thing about this kit is it's actually gonna be really easy to install. Now, this one here, I'm not familiar with, so I'm actually gonna be diving into the instructions, which are pretty extensive. There's multiple pages of instructions there and trying to learn about this a little bit, but we needed something universal because we have kind of a custom idea that we wanna do in the Toyota Tacoma. So Jordan's going to be tackling this one. Just my initial impressions, I really like the Switch Pro the S-Pod is nice and convenient, but it is a little bulky. I do like the fact that on the S-Pod, the only wires that are coming out of this system are the power, the ground, and the cable to the switches, and then whatever accessories you're running. So if you have some of these that are blank, you're not gonna have a bunch of miscellaneous wires lying around, which from the looks of the Switch Pro, we've got 16 wires that are coming out of this thing, whether we're using them or not. And so it'll be something we'll have to figure out how to make look nice and clean. The other thing is, you know, we've got the toggle switches for the S-Pod. For the Switch Pro, you've got this very small, compact little button panel. It's actually why we chose this, because of where we want to mount this. It's a very small area. But I do like the tactile feel of the S-Pod HD panel. So if you wanted to get this S-Pod with the Bantam and this panel, you could do it, but you can see it's notably bigger, it's thicker, it's definitely heavier. This actually isn't gonna work for what we wanna do with this little guy. You get a lot more stickers with the Switch Pro, but I think we're gonna be fine with, uh, with what we have for the S-Pod. All in all, I think these are both great kits, just depends on how you're gonna use them. Now, the plan is I'm gonna turn these over to my sons, let them run with it. Okay, so I'm gonna be installing the Switch Pro inside the Tacoma. I really don't know that much about wiring and my dad's not here to help me out. So hopefully these YouTube videos I've watched and the instructions that came with it are really gonna help me out. Um, me and my dad, before we left for Overland Expo, we kind of decided where we wanted to put the Switch Pro in the engine bay. So we'll just have to remove part of the Viper alarm that makes that weird beep beep sound every time I lock and unlock it. We're gonna remove that and mount it to the side of the engine bay and then I'll just figure out the wiring from there. Should be pretty simple. There's a lot of people that'll do like these big setups with like custom brackets and whatnot for it. But we're just gonna do it straight out of the box, keep it pretty simple, and hopefully get some of these lights working on the truck. So my initial plan was to just cut this speaker out, but I decided to disconnect it from the battery first, and I'm kind of glad I did. Okay, so I disconnected the Viper alarm from the battery just to see what would happen, and now the truck won't start. So I'm gonna reconnect it, and then I'm just not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna try to relocate the, the speaker for it somewhere else, but I, this is something I, I don't wanna mess with without my dad here. So I guess we'll have to figure that out some other day. With the Viper alarm speaker kind of relocated now, it's time to start mocking up where I want the Switch Pro to be. I couldn't fit the Sharpie through the actual mounting holes on the Switch Pro, so I kind of eyeballed it on the side and figured out where I needed to drill. I drilled some very small pilot holes and then put the self-tapping screws into the Switch Pro and just drilled it right into place. Okay, so I've got the Switch Pros mounted up on the side of the firewall. That was a little nerve wracking, but we just used some self-tapping screws to put it into the side of the engine bay. Um, so now what we have to do, we have to run some wires to the inside of the cab for the controller. We have to get the wires hooked up to the lights, and then we have to run a ground, and then also that positive needs to connect to the battery right here. So, so far it's going pretty smoothly. I'm still a little nervous about this, but I think it's going to turn out alright. Okay, so what I'm getting from the instructions is this main wire loom has a few wires that need to go a few different places. We have a ground, 
And then we have this light blue wire, which needs to go into the 12 volt circuit. So I check the owner's manual. I'm gonna use the a fuse tap and get into the audio system and run that into there. And then there's another wire that needs to be somehow tapped into like the, the parking lights on the truck. So that way it controls the backlit on the controller. So I'm gonna try to figure all this out and we'll see if we can get this done today. Okay, so after putting the wiring harness in, I've kind of laid out the wires kind of where they need to go. And I think I'm gonna take this fuse tap, I'm gonna take it out of there and then I'm gonna come into the interior and then I'm going to tap it into one of those fuses. Um, the wire's pretty long, it should definitely reach. I'll just run it with the control wire and then we're, we'll find one of these for the 12 volt that it needs. And yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so now we need to take this controller wire for the little control module that's gonna go on the inside, route it through the firewall. And while I do that, I'm just gonna tape that blue ignition, the fuse tap wire to this, run it all through the same time. And then we'll go on the inside, drill some of the plastic to mount the, the control panel. So we gotta run the wires through it. And then we should be pretty close to wrapping this up. So it's a little hard to see, but this is where we're gonna be running the wires to the firewall. Uh, we already ran the antenna wire for the radio through here, so it should be pretty easy. I'm not sure if we're going to have to depen the connector to get it through. Um, we're going to try without it with it on first and just see how that goes. So I grabbed my coat hanger, tied the ignition wire and the control wire. I ended up not having to depen the control wire, taped it all to the, the coat hanger, and was able to just pull it through that big grommet in the firewall. Ended up being super easy, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Got the fuse tap all wired up. And now we're just gonna kinda clean this up, zip tie it, make sure there's no loose wires, and then next we'll get on to the control wire. Alright, so what I want to do is put the control panel right here. So that means we're gonna have to drill a hole somewhere through here to run this wire through it. And then we'll just route it underneath the plastic, up over the pedals, and kind of tuck everything away and make sure it's secure. Okay, so I'm gonna be mounting the control panel right here next to the shift lever. So what we're gonna do, just to get this wiring through, is we're gonna cut a hole. So I'm gonna mark it up, kind of get it centered, find out where I need to drill, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully don't mess it up too bad. Now, I have seen people mount these control modules in a lot of different places. You can buy little mounts for them, you can throw them on the dash over the air vents, but I really just wanted something that was a little cleaner. While I was a little nervous to actually drill into the plastic trim piece, all I did was mock it up with some tape, kind of figure out where I needed to drill to run the wires through, and this ended up working out really well for me. I like how it looks like it's more permanently placed than just stuck on inside the interior. After I used a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole, I then went to this like cone-shaped step drill bit. I don't know exactly what it's called. I just found it in my dad's drawer and I just drilled the hole big enough until I was able to fit the wires through. And perfect. Alright, so we got our hole, hole drilled for this wire to run through. So now we can just go through here, sit flush on the plastic, and we'll use some double-sided tape to secure that. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty clean. I ended up using some of this small Velcro that I was able to just stick and peel on after my dad's recommendation of not using double-sided tape, so that way I would have more than one chance to place it on. And again, I just kind of eyeballed where I thought it needed to go. I ended up doing a lot of eyeballing for this project, which I don't really recommend, but it did end up working out pretty well for me. Next, I just routed the wire over the, the pedals and the steering column, making sure to keep it all nice and tucked and kind of secured out of the way, because the last thing you want is for it to be caught in the pedals while you're driving. All right, got the wire all routed through. Now it's just time to connect this, kind of clean everything up, and put it back to where it was. It's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so now that we have everything in the interior done, all wired up, passed through the firewall, now it's time to start connecting some of these lights, getting the grounds, and uh, connecting the actual switch pro to the battery. 
So we're gonna see if maybe we can get the, the driving light feature to work, get the backlight on the KCs and the backlight on the control module on the inside. Um, we just have to tap into the driving lights on the headlights. Um, I'm not sure which ones those are. I'm probably gonna have to look it up and hopefully we don't mess it up. But yeah, I mean, we're close to being done and this hasn't been too bad of an install for my first time doing any type of wiring job. Okay, so now we're gonna be connecting this power cable from the battery directly to the Switch Pro itself. Um, we already have it grounded to the truck. We have everything else plugged in. Uh, these wires aren't connected to anything yet. These are what go to the accessories. So, yeah, let's see if we can get this thing to work. Now, wiring is definitely not my specialty and something that I'm very new at. All this was a huge learning experience for me, and it really taught me a lot. I had to figure out where to ground things, where to run wires, how to hide wires, tuck them, how to connect them. Now, there's probably a lot of people that are going to say this might not be the best way to do it, but there's always room for improvement. I'll probably go back and change things up, clean it up a bit, but it's working for now. Now, hooking up the KC highlights was very easy. All I had to do was connect the brown wires to the positives of them, and then ground them to the truck. All right, so just finished all the wiring. Um, really just connected the two A-pillar lights and grounded them, ran this daytime running light, uh, connected it with the headlights to the parking lights. Mm -hmm. Everything works, the back lights work. Um, yeah, now I just need to clean all this up, kind of tuck it away, figure out what I'm gonna do with those wires because those are for other accessories I might add later down the road. But right now I have nothing for them, so I've gotta find a way to clean that up. As I said before, this was my first time doing this and there's definitely room for improvement. What I'm doing here is just taping up the end of all the wires for the accessories, but I'm thinking maybe later on down the line I'll add some type of terminal to help clean things up and get rid of all that wire mess in there. Now I tried my best to tuck the wires away and make it look as clean as possible, but I'm not really that happy with it, but in the end, it does work. I was able to get the backlights to work on the KC highlights when I have the parking lights on, and the lights turn on when I press a button, and at the end of the day, that was the goal. Now I do think these KC highlights look pretty cool. I love the amber, just kind of ties in with the rest of the truck. I was able to figure out the app pretty quickly. It just connects with Bluetooth, and it has a lot of customization options. You can change the color on the control module to pretty much anything that you want. You can also control the accessories from the app, which is kind of cool, and you can change them from solid to strobe to flashing. It's pretty neat. All right, so got the Switch Pros all wired up. It's all installed. Um, it was a little difficult, a little more complex than I thought it was going to be, but in the end, we did figure it out. What I really like about this is all the customization options. Uh, you can go into the app and control everything from your phone, uh, set different functions for the lights, uh, different backlights, different colors for the control panel. It's pretty interesting, just fun to play around with. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Now I can add a few more accessories to the truck and everything's pretty much wired up the way I want it to be, so yeah. Hey guys, well, now it's my turn to do the work. And now that my dad has opened it up and gone through everything, I've watched an install video and the directions are pretty straightforward. This should be pretty simple. Uh, I don't think it's going to take very long. It's pretty much just removing the front two panels of the roof, removing some plastic pieces, and then screwing this in and just running it through the driver's side into the engine bay. So thankfully it's easy because I'm definitely the laziest one of my family. So yeah, let's get to work. This should be fun. Now, I know this is probably the simplest part of the whole install, but the last time I had to take off the two roof panels, I don't think I put them on correctly afterwards because I took it through a car wash once and some of the soapy water started leaking through all over my camping equipment. So just a word of warning, when you're putting this back on, please make sure it's sealed. So once you remove the roof panels, you're going to want to remove the driver's side sunshade as this is just going to get in the way of everything. It's pretty quick. Once you take it off, then you're going to start 
removing the plastic panel to which you are going to be actually routing the wire down through. Pretty quick process, getting the wire through is a little bit more difficult. As you can see here, I'm struggling because I didn't realize it was a plastic screw that you just have to pull out and then later pop back in. And you can see I'm still leaving it hanging there because I didn't realize you could just unclip the wire, which I do fix right here. I tried to turn it down, but what you hear in the background there is the air compressor. We had to turn it on to get ready the saw we need. Um, you'll see shortly that we have to cut out a piece of plastic to be able to fit around that metal mount that we're putting up right there. Pretty easy process. The only thing is I couldn't film this by myself, so uh, my dad came in clutch and he started helping me. Here you can see I'm marking out where it needs to be cut and then we're gonna take it to the table and then just saw it out, just kinda eyeball it. It's not difficult, um, definitely be careful with the saw. Now that all of that is secured, I'm just gonna loosely put the screws in until I have the rest of the plastic on just to make sure that everything's correct before this is tightened down just in case I need to take it off again and redo anything. As you saw, fairly easy process. Just had to unscrew a handful of things, pop it out, make sure you cut it. Not super exact, you can file it out and make it neat if you'd like. Uh, just enough to try and fit it through. I put the screws in, I haven't fully tightened them down just yet in case I need to pop this back out. But now we're gonna run the wire down through here. It's gonna go through the bottom. I'll show you exactly where we're gonna have to put it through to get into the engine bay. We just have to make a little bit of cuts to make sure it fits through. So that'll be the next part and then we just have to actually install the platform in the engine bay and then we're pretty much done. So this is the part I was mentioning earlier where you need to feed the wire through. It's a little difficult just because there's no straightforward way to really get it through. You just kind of have to finagle it. I guess you could always use my dad's method of getting a super long zip tie, uh, taping it to that and trying to slide that through, but I honestly don't know if it would make a difference. Now that everything's in place and correctly aligned, I can finish tightening down the S-Pod mount. And man, does it look good. I'm so stoked to use this. So we're gonna be looking under the seat. Do you see that big black dot right there? Right there. That's what we're gonna be cutting into. It's just kind of soft, sticky piece of styrofoam. We just need to make a cross incision so it can fit through and still be pretty waterproof. Then, once you get it through, it just comes right out on the other side. Just pull it through like that, super easy. Then we're gonna mount it right there. So, correction, it's not going here, it's going right here. So, just need to unbolt these, and then it should mount right there. And then I just attach this to the positive and negative charges on the battery. And here, it's like these little seals, foam seals. You're gonna slide it up through there, like such.
Boom. And then this will go back on top, and then you can screw this in. This section was a little challenging, just trying to find the right spots to be able to fit this through. Well, it still looked clean, but didn't get in the way of anything. I know my dad's always been really big on making sure you don't have loose wires hanging about, not only because it doesn't look good, but it can become dangerous over time, especially if they're exposed to different parts of the engine. Uh, it's just a recipe for disaster. So I was pretty careful. I tried to make sure that it was all tied down, zip tied, nice and clean. And I was pretty happy with the result in the end, as you'll soon see. Right here, I'm using some double-sided tape to secure the fuse box. I'm putting it right next to the battery. It can be a little difficult because the body is curved right there, so you kind of have to squeeze it down to find a flat surface, but once you do, it's not difficult. So as I finished everything and was showing my dad how it looked, he noticed that uh, I didn't flush cut the zip ties and he gave me a word of warning that he's cut his hands on it many a time. So yeah, I just took some, uh, some clippers and then just tried to cut it right along the, the clip as close as possible. That way, you know, when I'm sliding my hand in and out, I don't get any gnarly scrapes or scratches. So thanks for the heads up, dad. All right, well, now that we have everything installed, it's time to test this out and see how it works. So the positive is gonna go here. And the ground will go here. So everything went really smoothly, except for one small little hiccup. Uh, it's supposed to have Bluetooth capability, and yet I downloaded the app and it just didn't work. I'll show you guys what the screen looks like, but it's just on a constant cycle of scanning, reloading, not finding anything. Um, I tried turning it off and on, all kinds of tricks. I even looked on YouTube and there's not really any videos. My dad looked on the website, I looked on the paper, and we didn't see anything that would indicate what to do. So we're gonna call a customer service and see if we can figure that out. It's just a small problem, but aside from that, it works great. Setup was super easy. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And now I'm stoked to see what Jordan ends up doing. I'm not sure if it'll be as cool as mine, but who knows, maybe it will be. Maybe it'll be better. Let me just say as a dad, I am super proud of both boys for taking on those installs. They did that completely by themselves. I may have consulted a little bit, but I was hands off for both of those installations. And I think that goes to saying that either one of those systems can be installed by just about anyone. If my sons can do it with just some basic knowledge and some hand tools, you guys can do it as well. Now, what system do I think is best? Well, it's kind of tough because they're not really apples to apples, right? We have one that's vehicle specific, which I think is perfect for the Jeep Wrangler JK. To be able to just bolt that in, it fits nicely, is awesome. If you're doing something universal, I think that the Switch Pro might be the better option. It's a smaller module, it's easy to install. I kinda like it a lot. Plus the price for a universal is a little bit better. And I know some of you out there are maybe going to chime in and say, oh, there's, do-it-yourself options out there, or there's some cheaper ones out there, and you're right, there are, and you can build that yourself if you want, but you know what? They're both made in the United States of America, and that, for me, on a personal level, when I can support American-made companies, I will, and when I have the choice between two, well, how cool is that? So, there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed checking out the Switch Pro and the S-Pod and seeing it, the install and the review. If you have any questions, let me know down below, and we will leave links to both of those products and go check them out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.